Hi, welcome back to AR Engine Research. Today I'm going to work on my compressed air engine and I have all the parts completed now and some of the assemblies that I need to put together first. The, uh, this is the main housing that the completed assemblies will be put into. The uh, reason for these slots is when I assemble the parts that go up on the top part of the engine, which is the valves, rocker valve heads, they will just be assembled outside on the workbench and then these will be taken off and then just slide in and then put the two plates back over to hold that in place. Same thing for these on the bottom. This will be where the main drive shaft and um, the ring assembly and the crankshaft rotor assembly is, is put into. You assemble it outside, slip it in, and put the bearings back on. And in a minute, I will show you all of the completed parts and how they kind of go together. But first I just wanted to show you what the assembly will look like. There won't be a plate either on the front or the back or the top. Um, let's see. I, yeah, these are the, the two bearing plates and the bracket. These four bolts here will be the ones that there will be, not these, but there will be two plates that get bolted to it. They stick out so far and they've got a, a hole there and a hole on this side that matches up to the hole in my engine to transmission adapter plate that's on the vehicle. So oh, I guess not much more to say about this. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at my parts that I have put together and laid out. Okay, these are the, all of the parts that go into the engine. This is the uh, drive ring. These things are what I call rot uh, drive shaft rotators. They go inside of each of the rings. They have two main bearings and then two smaller bearings that, that position it inside. The two holes here are what goes over the drive shaft and these rotate the drive shaft as they rotate. There's two set screws here, two set screws here that will position it on the drive shaft. These rings are steel. The rotator assemblies are aluminum. These are the cylinders and as you can see it it goes inside the or over the top of the stem on the rotator ring. This is a piston that goes inside and it's a free floating piston. So that means that when the engine is running, it'll rotate like so up and down. And the piston is what pushes it up and down naturally. And if you are accelerating or the engine is running, the piston is 
pushing down. If you stop accelerating or shut the air off, piston stops. If you're moving, the ring continues to go around up and down, but the piston doesn't move. That's going to say wear and tear on the on the seal. Um, let's see. These are what I call valve head assemblies. There's two valves in each one. You have the, this is the intake and this is the cylinder. And this is where the exhaust valve is inside. All you see on the outside is a stem, which gets pushed and pulled. When you put air into it, this valve is shut. If this is pushed in, that lets air come in, come to the cylinder, push it down. When this is shut off, and this is shut off, the piston can't move. So you have to open the valve that lets the piston push or this rotator ring push the piston back up into the cylinder and come out through the exhaust hole here and this has to rock up and down to to do that open and close the valve when it rocks up it pushes it in lets the air in, goes, pushes the piston down. As it gets down to the bottom, the ring goes to the bottom, starts to go back to where it wants to push it back up. It pushes the exhaust valve open, and this goes closed, so that lets the piston push the air in, push it over, and then push it out through the exhaust hole. Okay. Yeah. As I showed you, this is the drive shaft. This is the, what I call the valve head rotator shaft. It doesn't rotate, I mean it's stationary, but it allows the, the, the head to go back and forth like so. As much as it needs to, to complete the revolution on the ring. And as I said, the, the ring does not turn around this way. It only goes up and down, and as it does, it this part stays stationary up here, or up here, it's stationary. And as it goes around, it comes back up like so. And that's what actually pushes the rotator inside the ring to make it rotate in a circle. These two plates here are going to be mounted in the top of the engine housing. They'll have holes drilled in them and each of these will be screwed into it and that's what the, the valve head will hit in order to open and close. I've made it so that I can adjust these up or down to to adjust the engine running actually so that they open and close at the proper time. I don't expect the engine to weigh very much. I mean most of the parts are made from aluminum. These are aluminum, these are all aluminum. The rings, naturally, they have to be something that'll withstand wear, and the drive shafts, and the cylinders, that's, and the bearings. Those are things that I can't really control as far as weight goes, so. The entire outer, outer housing, that's all made of aluminum. So, Tomorrow, probably, I will start actually assembling. I cannot assemble the parts inside the housing. I can't get to it. 
because each one of these things has to be slid on first then the next one and then the next one and then the next one and to get in to adjust or tighten up these these four things I have to be able to get in from the side I've had to make a different allen wrench I cut off the tip of it so that at least I can I can get in there to do that but once you've got one on and it's inside you can't get inside to, it's just too difficult so that's why I put the two slots I can take the shaft I can assemble all of these things on the shaft up on my workbench and then I can take it over and just slide it in and put the bearing on it when I do that, then I can put these on it. And the way the cylinder and the, is on it, when you assemble this, this head is going to be a little ways down. So I can have this assembled, have this assembled, then I can put my cylinder on it turn it up and then just just raise the cylinder up to it and then screw it in that way I can take it out if I want to turn it down to replace the piston if need be or if you need to take this out then you can take it loose take it apart without taking the entire assembly apart That's my plan. Well, that's about as much as I can say about it today. I will make videos as I start to assemble it, but for now, if you're interested in what I'm doing and you'd like to follow along, please subscribe and up in the upper right hand corner there's a notification bell. Click on that for all videos and you'll be notified when I start working on it and as I go through the process and actually putting it in the engine and try to drive the car. So that's all in the future, but if you're interested, please subscribe. You longtime subscribers, thank you for checking in and I appreciate your following along all these years. And you're probably excited about seeing me put it together which i'm excited too i've put a lot of work and time and effort into this and i i want to see it come to an end eventually but for now thanks again and until next time <laughs>